All right, welcome back to Eonan's Edge, folks. Today's review is on the new QSP Rhino. This is an Apex knife, and I should also point out that this knife is a sample slash prototype of an upcoming release from QSP. So, basic specs on the knife. You've got Bowler M390 and a clip point. You've got a mid-high flat grind swaged in the front. Satin finished. This is a full tie frame lock. It uses a tie clip with a ceramic ball in it. You've also got tie back spacers and it's riding on full ceramic, ceramic ball bearings. It is deployed manually by either flipper or this beautiful, big, thick, full length blade fuller, which works fantastic. You got a little over three and a quarter inches of usable blade. You've got a scale length of four and a quarter. Your tip to tail length is just a tick over seven and a half. And the weight of this knife on my scale came in at 4.34 ounces. So let's talk about what I like. Aesthetically, this knife looks amazing. The, the dark tie scales, the big satin blade, the purple moku tie uh, on the back, back spacer here and on the clip ceramic ball for the, the the clip point like i said the the this knurled or twisted jimping on the back spacer is both aesthetically nice and it's functional and they followed this all the way up the blade which is fantastic uh it's a unique looking knife it really is um, but all, the cool part about it is that all of this stuff is fully functional. Like you can feel this, you can feel this, this knurled or twisted jimping right here in the back of your hand. When you put your thumb on this knife, no matter where you stick it on the blade, you feel that jimping. It's super positive. It's not aggressive. And, you know, it's going to be good for both left or right-handed people. It feels a little more aggressive in your left hand. So if you're lefty, it's going to feel a little more aggressive, but super comfortable. And if, if you're a righty, man, it's going to just your thumb just wants to go right there and just kind of lock into that jimping. So kudos for that. I really like that a lot. The knife, like I said, can be deployed either with the fuller, which works great, or with a flipper tab. It fires out there with both. Um, I can I can flip this knife open with the flipper tab, um, but again, I don't. I have a little bit of arthritis in my hand, so it's a little more difficult. But it does. It I can open this knife easily with the flipper tab. I mean, with the fuller as well as the flipper tab. Um, it's not quite a drop shut knife, but again, it's pretty close. But again, I am only the second person in the group to get their hands on this knife and be able to review it. So I think it'll probably break in a little more. It's, it's, it's pretty close, actually. Honestly, once you break, it's got a nice, it's tuned pretty well. And once you break that detent, the knife does fall uh, shut with just a couple of little flicks. But I think once it the detent ball wears in a little more on the blade, it'll probably be drop shut. So again, tuning on the knife is really, really well. The ergos are solid. The knife feels great in your hands. Um, it's, it's, it's just a little over half an inch in thickness. So uh, it's a little thicker than some of their other knives. So it does have a good beef, beefy feel to it. Um, your finger does pretty comfortably want to set here in this little recess slash uh, sort of semi-squared scalloping area and you can on uh, large glove size hands you can get all four fingers on here in hammer position with some room in the back to spare if you have bigger hands I think your hands are probably going to ride up onto the back of this in this position but again still good and you can even choke up onto the flipper tab and since this has got such a po positive grip on the top of it that's pretty comfortable too I used a couple of these different positions but the main position is going to be here. Um, you, you can cut with it up here and use it for tasks, but you're going to definitely want to uh, hold it in the main grip position like this. So balance on the knife is actually pretty good. It is a little bit handle heavy. The pivot point is about a half an inch back of the pivot. So right in here at the front of this um, cutaway or scalloping, it's right about there. It feels just a tiny bit handle heavy, but not too bad. But that's to be expected since there's a lot of material back here um, toward the back of the knife. 
I did put it through some cardboard boxes. Um, I shaved some fire starter pigtails off of a two by four with it. I debarked a couple of sticks I had around the yard here. Um, and the blade held up really well. It still cuts pretty sharp and cuts through paper. I didn't need to strop it. It, it held up pretty well, but our time is fairly limited with these knives. So I didn't want to go too crazy knowing that, um, there's a lot of other people waiting in line to give their opinions on the knife as well. But overall, the Bowler M390 looks like it was done properly and the edge held up really, really well. I really enjoyed this knife um, in the limited amount of time I had it. I did carry it a couple days um, that I was when I was off of work just to see how it carried in the pocket and it carries really well. It's got a smooth side, there's no rough edges, there's nothing that catches on your hand when you stick your hand in your pocket, whether you're wearing lighter pants or jeans. The pocket clip is pretty functional. It's not too stiff. I like what they did here. It looks good, solid. It's got a good thickness to it. No hot spots on it at all. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. You're, you, you don't, it doesn't dig into your hand anywhere. Um, so finally, let's get to issues and dislikes. So my large glove size hands felt perfectly at home on this knife. But folks with larger hands, and I mentioned, you know, they might end up back here on this kind of bigger uh, area near the, the, the butt of the knife or the back edge. Um, they may not feel the same way about that. Also, and this is something I, I hope um, gets made note of, I did, I did send a personal note off uh, about this. Um, the clip is very functional in terms of its springiness and its overall design but I think that it needs to be a 16th of an inch higher. So basically this little, this little base height needs to be up a little higher. When you try to put this in thicker pants, it is a little tough to get in there and it does kind of, you know, you do feel it kind of, the knife kind of catching back here. So you raise this up a 16th of an inch, the clip will have a little bit more access here underneath and, you know, will still face down and, and, and be good. And if you look at it, you can see that the clip does kind of angle up ever so slightly here. So raising this uh, base of this clip up is something that they should probably be able to do pretty easily. And I did make note of that when I passed on my notes about the knife. Uh, like I said, it did EDC very well. Uh, the other thing is I'm, I'm not a fan of big blades in satin because this is what happens when you take them out and handle them. They get all icky looking. And then you got to take out your Mrs. Edge cleaning hang and you got to wipe them off. I get that this is supposed to kind of be a premium offering in their lineup. And it does look and feel that way. The craftsmanship on the knife, the fit and finish is all very, very good. It's a QSB, so they're, they're getting to be more and more known for this. But here's my suggestion for QSP. Offer a second version of this knife. Don't change any of the materials. Don't change any of the design elements other than maybe raising this clip up a 16th of an inch. But instead of doing Mokutaya, I know that adds to the price. Let's do a black wash or even a silver wash of the clip, the back spacer, and maybe the blade, right? Because this is a very workable knife. This is a knife I could see myself carrying for a lot of different tasks, but I would like a finish on the knife on the blade of the knife that's a little bit more durable. So if we did a black wash with a black clip and this back spacer in black wash as well, boy, this thing would just be amazing. Or even just a black anno, right? But a black wash would be perfect. Black wash blade, black wash clip, black wash back spacer, or silver wash, okay? You keep the general look of the knife the same. Don't have to really change any of the other materials or design elements. And probably would get a little bit more durable finish on the knife and also might make that model a little bit less expensive than this one. But that is just my two suggestions. Raise the pocket clip up and offer a version with a ceramic slash black wash or silver wash blade clip and backspacer. Um, this knife will is really nice and it would be almost perfect for a work knife if they made those couple of small changes to it. I get that this is supposed to be more of a premium offering. Um, the only other thing I would say, 
And this is something that kind of runs throughout the QSP line. I wish this knife were about 5 to 10% larger. Since it's got a big beefy blade and it's got good thick handles and feels substantial, eh, it just feels like if it were stretched out a tiny bit more, it, it would be a little bit more of an all-arounder. But that's just a very, very minor thing. So overall, um, I still think it's good. It is, a, it is a very substantial feeling knife in your hands. So in summary, this is an exciting offering from QSP. They've done a really nice job with this. Uh, if this is any indication of where their higher end knives, in, they intend to go with their higher end knives, then yeah, right on. Uh, this definitely is a premium feeling knife in every way, fit, function, uh, materials, um, the edge held up really well on the blade, all those things were good. Um, I hope that they take note of the two things I mentioned, especially the clip, but also think about offering a version with without the fancy finish on the extra hardware. And I believe that this is gonna be a very, very popular knife for them. There's not an actual set price on the knife yet, but what I've been told is that the knife is going to probably go somewhere in around the 350 range. So it's not gonna be cheap, but again, um, the knife is impeccably crafted. It is just an absolute gorgeous piece. And it's something different. I applaud QSP for going outside of the box, going outside their comfort zone. The release date for this knife is supposed to be sometime in the early fall, um, if that information holds true. So I would expect at the latest you'd be able to probably get these knives by the end of the year. But again, that's all dependent upon QSP and not on myself. Uh, so there you go. This is a really cool knife. I would like to add one to my collection at some point, I believe. I, I would like to see them make a couple of small changes to the knife and consider offering a second finish option for the blade and the accessory hardware. But that is the QSP Rhino. This knife will be out uh, sometime uh, in the last quarter of 2022. If you get a chance to purchase one of these, I think you'll really like it. I hope you've enjoyed this sneak peek review. One other thing I will show you is here it is next to a QSP Penguin. So the Penguin, everybody know, pretty much knows what these look like. It is uh, shorter, smaller, and definitely a lot thinner of a profile knife than this Rhino. That just gives you an idea size-wise. That's all I got for you folks. QSP Rhino. Look for it this fall. Thanks for watching. As always, please consider hitting that like button down there, subscribing to my channel for content notifications, and as always, stay sharp.